Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Von and Roz Show. I, uh, I'm your host, Von, and I got my co-host, uh, Roz, with me. Say what up to the people, Roz. What up, people? And um, I got, like, an interesting uh, topic to talk about. Uh, what makes a person uh icon in uh, music? And I was watching this video of uh, Donnie uh, Warwick where she was saying that, uh, in her opinion, uh, Beyonce is not an icon. And I, I I watched the whole video through, and um, she had her points. Her her key points was saying that she was saying that yes, uh, Beyonce is a cool artist, but let me see what happens in the next fifty. Well, she said not fifty. Uh, maybe thirty or twenty years from now, will people still talk about her music? And that got that got me thinking. Like other artists, it's like. Hmm, that's um that's really interesting because um you know uh you got these artists now that some like you know they come out with like maybe a couple hits and maybe 20 years or 10 years down the road you don't hear from them anymore so like what like who like okay so my question is what's what's in your opinion makes a artist an icon all right so before i get to like my definition of it, I, um, like you were saying, how artists kind of fizzle out for a couple of years. Actually, what with what you said, that's actually too long. Mm -hmm. Most artists actually fizzle out between two and four years. You won't hear from them. They'll have that that huge if if they even get a buzz, they'll have that huge buzz, and their career could run between two and four years, and then like. You don't really hear about them, and you know they, they that artist might be lucky enough to still be relevant in a certain realm, and they'll just continue to make money that way. But um, you know they they might fizzle out on like a pop level. But um, I guess to me, what makes a and we just talking about music icons, right? Yeah, music icons. Okay, so with a with a music icon, um, for me. Uh, obviously, your music got to stand the test of time, but you don't, you know, these guys whose music lasts a long time, you might not even be a music icon. You just might be really great at music. Mm -hmm. But for you to be an icon, your music got to stand the test of time. You have to be a, uh, a, a subjectively great artist, which means like you great across all, all mediums and forms of media. Even people that don't like you can be like, wow, that person is a great artist. Um, your music has to inspire people. And it also has to inspire other artists. Right. And your entire body of work um, should be able to translate from generation to generation where where people look back and be like, wow, that that person's music was like outstanding. Or even if even if they don't like your that music, man, that person's skill was just like up here you know that's that's kind of what makes a music icon to me you know uh visually you know you're, you're also you gotta have like a type of uh visual appeal you don't necessarily have to be like the most attractive person but something about your look um people can put your look with your music you know like you gotta put you gotta put the uh the androgynous style with prince mm -hmm. you gotta put the um uh, and, and it's the incorrect thing to say, but it's the closest thing I can think of to it with Elton John. Everything that you think is like super fabulous about the LGBTQ community. Yeah, with the, you know, the yeah. glitter and the flashiness of his uh, yeah, costumes. Right? All the colors and stuff, you can put that with Elton John or like the outrageous, uh, you know, sexualization um, or sexual freedom of their body. You know, it's Janet and Madonna. Mm. That that type of stuff. Yeah. On top of if you happen to be a great vocalist or musician or producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with you on that. What you just said, because Donnie said the same thing. Like, hey, can your music stand to the test of time? Um, you know your you look. Said, you said, you said uh, Dion Warwick or, or Donnie who? I mean Dion Warwick. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, you talking about Whitney Houston? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was like, no, let, let me get her name right. Yeah, she said everything you just said, like, based on the look, based on how long your music has uh, stand for the test of time. And um, I was, re I remember, man, I was having this conversation with this at, uh, at the radio station. 
like who would you like cause this 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 kind of same topic like who would you consider like the king of r&b or queen of r&b and you know people had their answers and i remember this one girl <laughs> and i know some people was gonna like really gonna debate about that but me i'm like no nah, this this dude he ain't even close do you remember this artist called uh sammy yeah he kind of he kind of like the lead singer from uh from uh god uh, from uh the guys the guys that made candy rain he kind of looks like he yeah 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 so like if, if, okay y'all don't remember sammy he came out in 1999 with the uh song i like the way and then um from his career he you know he he disappeared um you know had a normal life came he was in and out the music business so you know i was having this debate with this girl like well i don't think sammy has the he's not like an icon or a legend since he's been in out the game for a while yeah he's a producer and whatnot but can you if you go to like so like a party or a barbecue would you hear like somebody people would you hear somebody play sammy's music maybe but not a lot though i mean and the maybe is a weak maybe yeah <laughs> Cause we, it, it might be one person at that party who know who the fuck Sammy is. Yeah, me and you know because we basically study music. Yeah, but unless you're one of those girls that like that dude, yeah. you don't know who the hell Sammy is. Yeah, if, if 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 we if we if we if we ask like maybe kids who are like at least sixteen or eighteen, they'd be like, who? <laughs> yeah, they don't know who the hell Sammy is. Like who Sammy? Like like cause cause he he hasn't really made he hasn't really made like um like a like like a hit or maybe like a fashion sense to like to last the test of time. Like we was even we was even arguing could we consider like Aaliyah like some type of like um icon? And I would say no because well uh, in my opinion like I don't know how far she can go because she she died in what. 2001 and you know the music industry changed a lot you know from the 2000s into 2010 so it's like well who knows how far she could have went though but i have a rebuttal for that mm -hmm. um Aaliyah's vocal stylings and her sense of fashion are probably the most influential uh thing and in, in modern female music mm -hmm. you got a lot of females with very who can't sing as well as Aaliyah, mm -hmm. but they try to sing in her style and they try to dress in her style. Like the the shit is is it's it's grossly abundant with her uh, her influence. You even see it in Rihanna. You see it in that 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 uh, LMA, LMA or yeah, whatever. Yeah, LMA. <laughs> her fuck her name is. Damn, <laughs> you like fuck her. Uh, oh, I mean, she she's all right. I, you know, I just don't. I know how to say her name the right way. Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, you you hear it in ways with Janae Aiko. Uh, there there's a cavalcade of R and B singers that sing in the style of Aaliyah. But even with that, you you really you can say she's influential. But I can I can agree with you that you might not be able to call her iconic because mm -hmm. she doesn't have that. She she sold a lot of records and was super successful, but I don't know if you can call her iconic because she doesn't even have she didn't have the type of grasp on music that even Rihanna has right now. Yeah, how she's like like how she just crossed over not to yeah. just R and B but like pop and like hey everybody know who who you know Rihanna is. Yeah, the whole planet knows yeah. who Rihanna is. So you know, I, like you said, she I think she would have gotten there. Uh. uh if she stayed alive, but you know, we'll never know because of, you know, what happened. Yeah. That's, that's real true. Yeah. We, 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 we may never know. <laughs> it's like, right. dang, you know, she died. What, what, 18 years ago. And, right. um, you know, we don't know, um, what, 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 what would happen in her career. So exactly. I, I can, I, you know, what's another person I can be like, I, I can lose sleep without if even, even though they did so, uh, hits and records, man. I, I like the episode I did with Immature. I felt that they were this group of kids that was like, "Oh, that's what's up. They're there." And yeah. that's pretty much it because yeah. like like man, come on, man. Like in the 90s and the, the, there were so many R&B uh groups that you could just pick whichever one. It was like, "Well, yeah. that person is going to go way beyond where Immature is going to be at." And I'm not saying like they garbage or anything like I that. They just never progressed musically yep there you they go kinda, even when they became adults mm -hmm. their music was still kind of in that 
boy band type thing. You ne- they never really became like fully mature singers with more with more mature content or even just more fun content. Their music always kind of stayed at where it was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it stayed where it was at, and it was like, and then the allegations of Marcus Houston and Chris Stokes. That was another yeah. thing that was going on. And, it, and again, it was like, well, I can listen to like people like Mint Condition or Tony Tony Tone or Luther Vandraw. So yeah. it was like, I really, if if Immature didn't exist, I, I wouldn't lose no sleep. It, you know? No, because they were, like you said, they were just kind of a, a thing. Like they, they have a lot of likable songs. And like, I think the thing that was big for immature back in the day is like it's it really seemed like they had a lot of potential yeah 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 they they yeah they did have a lot of potential because you want you want to know what's funny like um usher for example he came out at 94 or 93 Mm -hmm. whichever those years and he was in a boy band group but then um that didn't really work out and he went solo and then i was like i was listening to his early stuff i was like they weren't bad but they were like they were too um the content wasn't right for him for for that age yeah, so you yeah. know 97 he came out i mean yeah he came out again in 97 and then look what happens you, you know he right i i can say yeah i could say you know you know usher is some could, could you say usher somewhat of an icon you it, know what um i cannot mm-hmm. when i usher to me he is a, a and, and a lot of people will confuse this because when I say this, they don't think I'm just strictly talking about his music, mm-hmm. but I'm not. I'm talking about him, the total package. Usher is a huge pop star. He's a hit maker. Um, when Usher comes out, he's going to make people want to listen to his music. But Usher does not influence a lot of music. He doesn't really have a distinct style to where you'd be like, oh, that's that sound like Usher. Um, he's, he's, he's also in that in that air like like Beyonce where he's an amazing performer mm-hmm. um and and he can and and he doesn't use a lot of music that actually utilizes how good he can sing like when you just hear Usher's regular music you're like okay he's a good singer but then when you hear music where he can really sing it like blows you away you're like why you don't do that often like he has a song called um Here I Stand Damn. and when I heard that I'm like wow this dude can really fucking sing like he always been a pretty good singer Mm -hmm. but like that shit was great like that (laughs) shit. like i didn't know that he could sing like that he doesn't uh he just doesn't because that's to be fair that's not the type of music he makes usher makes dance music he he makes bedroom music you know he doesn't really have a lot of a huge in-between variety he makes breakup music you know that 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 type of stuff you know he's I wouldn't call him iconic because when if you if you say Usher has a certain influence over this artist and the other artist, it really goes back to Michael Jackson. So yeah, that's anyway. true. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there was like so many. Uh, even even um, Double Toasted, they even said this. Um, they even said it like, man, uh, when uh, Michael Jackson passed away, they was like, dang, these artists should pay Michael Jackson some royalties because they they just jacked his style. <laughs> Fuck yeah, because like, okay, so Usher came out in the 90s, so he's a little older than the guys that are, 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 are out right now. Mm-hmm. So you could be like, wow, man, Chris Brown really got his style from Usher. Yep, I heard that, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Chris Brown, one, he, he loves Michael Jackson, like 80% of the people on the fucking planet, and Usher got the same shit from Michael Jackson. So it's like, but guess what? Neither one of them, neither one of them had the group of people and writers and producers that Michael Jackson had. And neither one of them can dance like Michael Jackson. Like, and Chris Brown's an outstanding dancer, but he still don't dance like Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like it, Chris, Chris Brown legit probably need to just, if he really wanted to, he could just be the choreographer for every musician out there. Because the dude can dance his ass off. You know, as much as I'm not a fan of his music, I mean, he made music for girls. So, you know. <laughs> or do you do you mean girls who who like to get beat up by their boyfriends? Oh man, that's a, that's dirty. <laughs> I mean, I'm... he is removed. He's he's uh <laughs> he's he's paid for his crime, so I'm gonna leave the man alone. Okay, he got my little daughter, so hopefully, you know, he changes, you know, his uh his ways. ways. <laughs> 
you know. But but back to yeah yeah yeah. I was I, yeah I was bringing up old junk, but all right. <laughs> but you real petty, but uh yeah, like you know the guys that the guys that you think of when you think of Michael Jackson, you know you think of Usher, you mm-hmm. think of Chris Brown. Uh, you think of Justin Timberlake, you think of Neo. I, I mean, you damn near can list like our, you damn near can list the entire spectrum of modern day male R and R and B if we be honest. Yeah, that's real true, man. Because it's like if they, dance, if they dance, there's a Michael Jackson influence, right? Like it's like 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 can you name like some of these pop artists who haven't stole Michael style? The the one that I would say didn't and and um. And a lot of people might disagree because he takes so many elements from older and modern music. Mm-hmm. I would say Bruno Mars. Oh. Um, because uh and, and that's really if you consider him R and B. I can he's more pop, but mm-hmm. he does do like R and B type music. Um his music is more, you know, more manufactured for everybody. He really doesn't take a lot of Michael Jackson influence. He does dance. You can tell he got a choreographer yeah. that be working their ass off and shit. So I, I would say Bruno Mars, and then everybody else is really just they got a lot of influence from Michael Jackson's dance stylings. Okay, all right. Even 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 like a little vocally with the pitchiness in the voice, especially when you get to like Weekend, who tries to sing in Michael Jackson's octave all the time. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> And he don't even make the. It's crazy because he don't even make the same type of music as Michael Jackson. But you see the influence there because he's he tries to sing in the stylings of Michael Jackson. Yeah, it's just crazy because it's almost it's like if Michael Jackson did drugs, he might sound like The Weeknd, but it's still different. Yeah, <laughs> or or you can get another guy um called uh Michael Trapson, who if Michael uh, Trapson. yeah Michael Trapson is is a great example. He does uh trap beats if if Michael was a trap uh rapper slash pop singer. Yeah. And that dude is fucking amazing. Yeah, and it is. He is amazing, man. I'd be like, dang, bro. Like, uh, he made that song what turn up, man. I was like, dang, this, this, this is dope. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, to like, I guess to like further the conversation about what makes a music icon, let's let's get on people who, um, we think might be icons. Um, and and maybe we can. I, I'll say Michael Jackson for later because that's kind of easy. Yeah, that's too easy, man. Like, yeah, for me, um, for me, you got to go with Luther Vandross. Oh yeah, um, man, <laughs> music icon, uh, do the countless national anthems. I think he might have sung like one of the March Madness renditions of the Mar- March Madness song. Mm-hmm. He, he's, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. He's the most talented vocalist, um, put on the face of the universe to me. Hey, can I you stop know? you real quick? Yeah. And I'm not tr- trying to go off topic, but I was watching uh, Meteor Man the other day, and I was yeah. like, "Oh man, Luther Vandross, man, yeah. he was a he was what a gangster." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, come on now, right? But, but go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. He's the most uh, talented vocalist in the universe. Is a uh, and people don't sing his songs not because they don't like them. It's incredible. It's it's incredibly difficult to sing a Luther Vandross song good. Oh, um, yeah. him him and him and then Whitney Houston. Luther Vandross's music stands the test of time. Yeah. If you don't know who Luther Vandross is, you probably don't listen to a lot of music. Or 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 your or your parents didn't raise you right. Or your parents didn't raise you right. <laughs> but um, and and on top of that, Luther Vandross did all this amazing singing. And his voice was incredibly deep. Mm. Like he could have been like a um a Disney villain. His voice was so fucking deep. <laughs> Dude was outstanding. He when he performed music, his live performances either sounded like the track or they were better than the recording itself. Oh, yeah. And his performances were extremely subtle. He didn't really do dancing. And his background then his background singers probably sing better than most of our favorite singers like he made sure that he only got the best singers to sing with him most singers um they all of their background singers aren't great singers they sound good together Mm -hmm. his background singers sound great individually like great like if those people came out right now with music streaming they would all have record deals (laughs) um yeah and and his uh his influence in music like people try to 
Luther Vandross is probably the main reason why black people sing the national anthem the way that they do. Yeah, the way he did it, man. It was like, dang, bro, you, you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Uh, yeah, Luther Vandross is the absolute greatest vocalist ever. I feel like he could sing opera. He could switch to jazz. He could. He could. He obviously could do pop. He obviously could do R and B. Um. Yeah, he's fucking outstanding. He. He's iconic for just singing, just singing, period. Maybe he don't have the um, the appeal like a Beyonce, but when you just talking about straight up singing, period, is Luther Vandross. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree, man, especially with the, yeah, his music does um, have that, um, that energy that can go through the test of time. You still hear it on radio stations, man. Um yeah, he is the goat, man. Um, yeah, he's the goat, bro. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say uh, this person, this group is an icon, and people are gonna disagree. Um, I'm gonna say Jodeci because I, yeah, yeah, I uh, can agree with that. Even though I'm not a fan, I can agree. With that. Yeah, like um, when you think about it, man, they you like they were. They were that R and B group that wasn't just a regular R and B group because their looks was more like hip hop oriented, and people was like, "Hey, they rappers? No, man, they ain't rappers." And they had these vocals that it was just like, "Dang, y'all can really sing without like you know without the drumming machine or any of that." Because because all of them, you know, they grew up in the church, and that's how they got their vocal statuses, and like even today, man, like you look at the weekend or any of these rappers, they did adapt their style. Like, not singing-wise, but also fashion-wise. Yeah, visually, visually for sure. Yeah. Um, and to go off you, like, Jodeci was, they were the, they, they were, from, they might have been the dudes that made you realize that, uh, that rappers really aren't that tough. A lot of these R&B dudes are some thugs. Like, if, oh, yeah. <laughs> if you made music before like the year 2000 you were an r&b group you probably was was like a street dude like like boys to men might be the only like completely clean cut group yeah the rest of the dudes was like thugs and drug dealers oh yeah <laughs> man like i remember man I, I think it was like some type of interview where casey and jojo was saying like they was fighting somebody at the club and they they got like a bottle of champagne bashing on the dude's head bro yeah, bro yeah. And it was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it. I don't want I don't want it with KC and JoJo back in the day, bro. Cause they ain't they ain't give a fuck. Well, and, no, um, man. <laughs> and uh on top of that, uh their their vocal silence when you get to the more the raunchier part of R and B, you hear that shit now because I feel like up until that era of R and B that they were big in with H Town and those other groups that kinda like parody or copy from Jodeci, mm-hmm. um, R&B wasn't super sexual. Like, it was kind of, um, it was suggested. That oh, they, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially, like, know. the early 90s, man. Yeah, but they really, like, got into it with Jodeci, because, like, right after, right after, right after Jodeci, you know, you get to the 2000s and the mid-2000s, you get, like, all these hypersexual R&B <laughs> Guys, you get like a. It was a dude named Pretty Willie, and then you hear Pretty Ricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just a just a a, a a wave, of, and even like R and B right now, when you get to like the stuff that isn't on the radio, that's not like a neo soul type thing, mm-hmm. super super sexualized, and it's all jealousy fault. And now mm-hmm. all R and B dudes want to be hard, but them. Jodeci was hard back then, and they didn't say it in their music. That's what they was. Right, you man. Right now, they talking about what they did. I was trapping in this. Nah, oh, bro, you not. You need to go back and go to Jodeci or, or maybe follow Bobby Brown around for 24 hours. Right, exactly. You know, and he was doing Tyson. crack. <laughs> he was doing crack, and he was out there getting holes with Mike Tyson. So, <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all ain't nothing. Y'all... You, Y'all ain't about that life. You, you know, you you don't want, you want to know what's funny about that. Who who would be the absolute moron to talk shit against Bobby Brown and Mike Tyson at a club? And a complete idiot. Because first of all, I'm not talking shit to Bobby Brown, not because I think he can beat me up, 
But Bobby, a young Bobby Brown back in the day just seemed crazy. He seemed like one of them dudes that will try to fight you even if you are way more physically superior than him. He high enough to not give a fuck. And then you tell me that his best friend is Mike Tyson and you think I'm going to fight him. Right. No. <laughs> I like all my teeth. Right. <laughs> You're going to be waking up in the morning like, hey, dog, what happened? Yeah, man, you was talking junk to Mike Tyson and Bobby Brown and I uh... – I don't know, like, like it was, you know, you you be like, man, it was like eight or nine of them. No, you got beat up by two dudes, bro. Like, right, you gotta. They might believe you because Mike Tyson hit hard enough to make you think you got jumped. By right, <laughs> it was about eight or nine of them, law dude. Right. It was one, bro. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, I can, I can say, but then again, it's it's hard to say because mm-hmm. here's the thing with Jodeci. Mm-hmm. Jodeci has songs. But they don't have complete albums that are universally recognized as great. Maybe that that one album with Forever My Lady, but they don't have necessarily a, their entire music collection. You can be like, man, this entire body of work is awesome. They only so, made what? Uh, what, three albums? Three or four albums, man? Yeah, like three or four. Yeah. But yeah, I, but I, I wouldn't say that they are iconic because I, I think they're highly influential and I think they highly respected, but I think they just like just a level below being iconic because even with just like with um, immature while Josie, they came out hard and they had a bunch of great songs. They still kind of just stay what they were, you know, maybe until um, cause, they didn't really do anything different, honestly, until the group broke up, if you think about it, when it just became Casey and JoJo. Yeah. And then those guys, they went from making, like, kind of the raunchy and um, fun R&B music to more of, like, love ballads. I so. could say, I could say, I, I, the the thing I could say with Jodeci is that I see, uh, what you said before, is that other people did copy their style when they were around. Yeah. So... Yeah, they kind of they 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 reach just above. Like, damn, you you guys are so close to yeah. being such iconic artists. But you know, there are going to be people who say, "No, nah, Joe, see, they icons, bro. I don't give a fuck yeah, what you say." Like they it, they just a step below because they didn't have the success that as much as people love them, Joe, see, didn't have the success that maybe they should have had mm-hmm. with as much as people like them. If that makes sense. And they just didn't have like that huge body of work, like a Luther Vandross or a Michael Jackson. They just like they just they like they never really fizzled out. The they just they just got older basically. Yeah, they got older. Yeah, they like, fifty plus. You know, the, group broke up, the group broke up, but I don't feel like they just was like, oh y'all old and washed up. It was more so like, okay, the group broke up. There's no more jealousy. Casey and JoJo kind of doing their thing. You know they're an older R and B group now. I never really feel like I I, I don't feel like they has been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And plus, um, you got these Japanese, uh, you got these anime nerds know who Jodeci is now. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> and speaking of groups, <laughs> I think there is one group that went where Jodeci should have went, mm-hmm. and they just and for whatever the disputes within Jodeci's group. Um, Jodeci didn't make it, but this group did. I feel like TLC is iconic. Oh yeah, even though, yeah, man. Even though we hear about how they got, like, if you if you just listen to the money situation, it's like, well, they ain't made no money. Well, they sold tons of albums. They have a body of work. Um, they have an iconic look yeah. that people recognize. They have a, a type of singing style. They have a type of music style, um, and people recognize that group. And that group is influential. Yeah. You know, they, they are influential in, you know, with how uh, women were trying to form after them. So um, I think Jodeci had Jodeci, had somebody really came around and done Jodeci the right way. Yeah. I think they would be viewed like TLC. Yeah, I, I think with uh, uh with Jodeci, um, they they changed their management with uh with uh Heavy D to um to Death Row Records. And, okay. and, oh, shit. and yeah, I think so I think that that second album that they came out with it was good, but it wasn't promoted well. It was like, oh, Josie got a new album out, but they didn't it didn't get it didn't get pushed to like 
dang, bro, this had a, this this on um, this album is it was a good album, but the but the promotion was garbage. They didn't promote it yeah, well. Yeah, that's that's trash too, cause you hear about that stuff a lot. Yeah, and and um uh, with uh TLC, uh yeah, man, TLC, man, they they've been around what 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 they started with eighty nine or ninety, and. Uh, it was- it had to be in the nineties, maybe nineties. So damn near thirty years. Yeah, thirty years, and then you know they they crossed over. I think they um, what what happened? It was a song that they really crossed over. You know, uh, the all that theme song. Yeah. Yeah, they the yeah, a lot of people knew them from that, and um, yeah, they was they was in like movies and television too, man. Yeah, they was in movies and television, and then even going into the two thousands, it's like they didn't miss a beat. They came out with I think the song, I think the album was called Fan Mail. Yeah. Um, and that shit was huge. You know, they were still iconic. And and if it wasn't for the, you know, unfortunate death of Left Eye, these ladies would still be making music right now. Yeah, that's true, man. It's just, like you said, man. man let, once they, they, they try to come back again with, you know, with uh, TLC, without Left Eye. Yep. When they, I, I remember they had that reality show. It was a competition where they replaced somebody, and that didn't work out too well. And then they tried to get Little Mama to take over uh, Left Eye's, um, you know, um, her 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 rapping vocals, singing vocals, yep. and that didn't work out too well either. So they kind of was just like, well, shit, we just gonna, you know, do whatever, you know, right? So yeah, not it, it's it's crazy too, cause like uh. Every every member of that group is recognized for something in that group, you know, and, and people fucking love TLC, man. Oh yeah, man. They, plus they 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 did their own solo projects, and hey, man, it it worked out, you know, for them, you know. Yeah, yeah. People love TLC, so I I you know they got global appeal, local appeal, um, and they're recognizable. You know, and I don't think they're necessarily the best singers as a female group, mm-hmm. but um, you know, their music is subjectively great. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you can pick out a, a TLC song and you like, yeah, that, that's the shit. <laughs> like this my shit. Right. Oh <laughs> man, bro, man, dude, we can man, we can keep going with this all day, but I know you got somewhere to be, so um. Um, anything else you want to say before I wrap things up, man? Um, actually, I do. Since since it sounds like we you want to wrap it up, I have to just jump to Michael Jackson. Like I said, uh-huh. um, it would have been too easy to do this shit at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So when you look at a dude like Michael Jackson, when we're talking about icon, um, you know, he has the uh, he he has the vocals. He can sing. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. We got he singing, choreography. Um, yeah, he has the appeal. He's known globally. Yeah, known globally. The style, man. It's like, like each and, and each and every single part of Michael Jackson's life from the time he was like, I don't know how the youngest that he was in the Jackson Five all the way until he passed when he was like fifty nine, sixty years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. Every single decade of this dude's life, he had hits. From when he was when it was the Jacksons to the Jackson Five to Off the Wall to Thriller to History to he did Invincible. <laughs> after this motherfucker died, he had a hit with Justin Timberlake. After he died, he still had a hit. Yeah, and it wasn't one of those like like pity things where like oh we just don't like it because it's Michael Jackson or right. they took his vocals from an old song and. A unused song and then they put it on some new shit like how they do with a lot of Tupac. Mm-hmm. No, that was a new song that he did not release and they edited the music. It was that song is the shit. I legit like that damn song. That that dude, Michael Jackson is um he he, he was influenced by James Brown. Oh yeah, man. He took James Brown's dances and transform them into some other shit. Yeah. His shit don't even look like James Brown shit. And then the moonwalk, he actually got that from some soul train dancers. One of them was uh I believe the lead singer of Shalomar. Yeah. Because they were the first ones to really do the moonwalk. And yeah. he did the moonwalk and he he made made it 
to where he did it so good, you thought Michael Jackson made the fucking moonwalk. Right. Every R&B singer who was a single male singer that danced is influenced by Michael Jackson. Every R&B singer who is a male singer who who um, has a higher pitch in their vocals is influenced by Michael Jackson. Every R&B singer, and you even see some rappers who wear tightly fitted clothing that, that is very distinguishable, that stands out, has brightness, a shimmer to it, certain type of shoes, their hair is a certain type of way, come from Michael fucking Jackson. That dude is the most iconic dude on the planet. There is not a country on this planet that they don't know who the fuck Michael Jackson is. The only reason they don't is because they probably come from a place that wasn't colonized. That's the only way that you don't know who Michael Jackson is. Yeah, or some like far off island with just natives and then they don't have any technology. Yeah, places that haven't been, you know, colonized or welcomed into the modern world. Yeah. Oh, like oh no. That killed that guy that was trying to fuck with them. We people. Alone. Yeah, that's true, yeah, and that's what he got. That's what he get. I and mean, also, man, man, uh, you you, you want to know what make Michael Jackson so iconic when um he also bought uh I know it's kind of off topic, but I'm just gonna say it. Fun fact. No, I, it's not like it's gonna be right with it actually. Um, uh, he bought he bought the rights to the Beatles, and, yeah. it, and it, 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 it's a funny story about that because um. Uh, Paul McCartney, he was telling Michael about, you know, owning, like, uh, the rights to, like, master tapes. And he was like, oh, that, that sounds really cool. And Mike was like, oh, who can I, what, what would make a profit for me? Oh, yeah, the Beatles. And Paul McCartney, man, he was mad as fuck, man. <laughs> he, was mad, he was mad in the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean... As fucked up as like okay yeah Michael Jackson made the smart move but it's still kind of fucked up like y'all friends and shit and you just took my man's like whole thing. Hey man, that's just business, bro. <laughs> I guess they ended up being cool because they was doing music together. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, I think I think it was before that, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm you know because they they still did music like in the 80s and I think they worked together in the 90s. Mm. But I think it took. Paul McCartney a minute to get over that shit. Yeah, <laughs> shit. You couldn't buy the back. You couldn't buy the uh, right. Uh, you couldn't buy the rights uh, to your own music. I'd be pissed off too. Um, yeah, and then, you know, Michael Jackson had like stupid money, so dude. I mean, I think he owned like like thirty percent of Sony. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. So yeah, bro. But yeah, Michael, living legend, living icon. Uh, also, got throwing. I, I I gotta throw in one more icon, man, before before we wrap it up. Prince, man, the dude, Fuck. Prince, man, <laughs> the dude made the dude the dude made so much music that Warner Brothers, the people he was with, had to tell him to stop. The same dude who dress up like a woman and wear high heels and can still take your girl. The dude can play any type of instrument and and it sound amazing. Oh, go ahead, bro. Oh, I was I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, man, it was just like holy crap! Like, 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 th like this dude, man, Prince, man. I don't I don't care what any of you say, man. This this dude, <laughs> holy crap, man. <laughs> he yeah, like like Prince was on some fucking Beethoven shit. Yeah, <laughs> super Beethoven. You beat beat Charles Barkley. I mean, not Charles Barkley, but Charlie Murphy in the game of basketball, bro. And, and it, not only that, uh, bro, the the fucking groups that came out, he put on dope music. Like he put on dope music from where he was from, Morris Day and the Times and shit. Yeah, Morris Day on the Time. And, and th there's another guy. I, I came. From, I I don't know his name, but he caught he Jack Prince style so much that it was like that. Even Prince didn't like sue him. It was more like, oh, that's cute. Um, I'm the real <laughs> thing though. But whatever, you can you can do your little homage to me i'm the real and thing I, and I know exactly who you're talking about and not only that like I, I think i was talking to you or somebody else about i'm like this dude not only is he like copying prince style but like in the music you hear the snare that prince uses yeah and, man like this motherfucker real disrespectful <laughs> you had, like okay it's one thing just to copy the look but you ain't even gonna do your own music you sneaky bitch right. <laughs> that's what prince probably said man like that right. sneaky bitch bro right let me see. Do I have another one? Um, do I have another? I mean, like we could keep going all day with this. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
Look, we 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 really can. I mean, you know, it's a uh, fuck Madonna. Yeah, Madonna, of course. M- Madonna more on the image thing though, because mm-hmm. you you see a lot of, and I know people will fucking hate. Well, maybe not a lot of people. If you got any sense or knowledge about music, I mean, one of the influences in Rihanna outside of you know Prince and Janet Jackson. If you don't see Madonna in a lot of what Rihanna do. You just really just a fucking hater. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even care about Madonna's music like that, but like, I mean, shit, you see Madonna and fucking Lady Gaga. Now that I think about it, you mm-hmm. know, um, and and then like, you know, Whitney Houston. Oh yeah, you know, man, of course, man. She's another like global icon at R and B. She's she's the greatest female singer ever to me. Yeah, um, man, those vocals I, just like it's like those vocals is just unmatched. Like I'd be like. Yeah. Yeah, those those vocals bring bring life into the world. Every time Whitney Houston sings, a successful birth has happened. Yeah. <laughs> even when even even like I remember she was paired up with Mariah Carey, and Mariah Carey can sing, but man, it was like when you compare it to Whitney Houston, like right next to each other, you'd be like, ooh. Yeah, and then like Mariah Carey, don't get me wrong, she can sing, but Mariah Carey is really known for like at the end of her songs or at the end of certain parts, she'll hit that one high note. Yeah. But like her vocal skills overall are not close to Whitney Houston. No, man. <laughs> like like uh, a lot of people know Whitney Houston for, for her song. Um, um, God, it was in that, uh, that movie, the bodyguard. I'll uh, always love it. Uh, yeah. Which one, man. Don't it's take me. It's, it's, it's called. I'll always love you. Okay. It's, I'm thinking of one more door. Yeah, it's um, it's it was the thing where they, when the bodyguard came out, that I believe that was either on the commercials or maybe I'm just thinking the bodyguard being in the video. But that was like the song for that movie. But I, to me, her best song is uh, "I'll Have Nothing." Okay. Like that shit is that shit is like it makes you. Oh yeah, that's that's the song I have nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that, 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 oh my fucking god, man. Oh man, you know what, bro? You one day we have to just we have to just do a video where we just talking about nothing but great, great vocals inside a great song. That's what we have to do. Okay. Because I almost I almost went on the tangent and started listing like great love ballads and shit, but I'm like, nah, we we gotta do that in another video. Yeah. We okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, man. I I'll, I'll be down to do that, man. So just just yeah. let me know when you want to do that. So. Yeah, man. But but yeah, that's that's all I got to say, man. I think I. I feel like we gave people a good idea of what's iconic and what's not iconic. Like, you know what? To 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 finish it up, because I believe you said Dion Warwick says that Beyonce is not iconic. Mm-hmm. I don't believe Beyonce is iconic in a music sense, mm-hmm. but I believe her image and her person and the energy that she brings to her music and the uh, the the things that she does as far as activism, like Beyonce as a person is iconic. Mm-hmm. Musically, I would say not. And I don't know if it's, but be- I don't know if it's because she doesn't influence other artists because you don't really see other artists do it like Beyonce, but it also m- might just be because it's, it's probably just difficult to do shit the way Beyonce does. And like everything does is a spectacle. And I would say this, even with even if somebody say like they um take Beyonce style or copy her, people gonna be like, Well, you just copying Queen B, so uh who is you? Yeah, cause, yeah, cause her style is so much with her, but I don't I, but it's difficult to say because I don't necessarily believe her music is iconic because her music is for the now. Mm-hmm. Um, when Beyonce makes music, that shit is the shit right now. Mm-hmm. But like people don't really, I don't feel like her music is like some shit that you go back to. Her music is more like at a time and a place type of thing. Okay. Like this is what it is right now. Um, you know, and um, I'm not mad at anybody who disagrees with me on that. Um, because it's it's difficult for me to gauge a person like Rihanna or Beyonce because these people are so beloved. Mm-hmm. But their music isn't their love so much outside of their music, and people don't necessarily talk about their music when you talk about them. They'll be like, "Oh, I love Beyonce music," but they'll be talking about how much they love how Beyonce looks or how she dances mm-hmm. or her daughter or Jay Z and um, Solange beating up Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's so much there's so much stuff surrounding Beyonce that like the music is kind of like the last part, even though the music is what what brings everything to the forefront. All right then. Oh uh, well, you you got you you kind of said everything what uh um Dion was saying, and um she um um I also agree that she said, well we don't know what's gonna happen in her career in the next twenty or thirty years. Maybe right. her or maybe her style will change. Maybe you know she'll be in the in, inducted to the Rock and Roll of Fame because you know Dion she been in the game since what the. The fifties, the 50s, late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, late fifties, because she was she was right before Aretha. Yep. So you, you, we we may never know, and you know until you know time will tell. So mm-hmm. I think we're gonna wrap it up here. So yeah, um, people, I'm Von. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I'm gonna cut that out. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys? Uh, who do you guys consider a uh, legend in the R and B game or rap game? And do you agree? Do you disagree with us? You know, I'd like to hear y'all thoughts in the comic section. Um, I'm Von the Stampede. You guys can follow me on social media, Von the Stampede. And um, if you're asking when the next unsung video, give me two to three weeks or maybe four, because I have to I have to substitute this. And doing those videos, they they take a long they they take a minute. They take a minute, especially if I'm writing, if I'm draft writing and editing everything by myself then hey that it, that's why it takes so long but yeah i'm buying the stampede and the rise um can the people follow you somewhere <laughs> or <laughs> just here or or, or tell them man oh well, yeah i do have my social media back up because <laughs> you know i was off of that shit for a minute but um yeah you you guys can uh follow me uh on uh instagram at rise for life that's r-i-z-e the number four l-i-f-e and um I think I might be making a return to Twitter. I don't know, but for right now, just hit me up on uh, Instagram at Rise for Life. All right, and uh, hopefully, um, we'll see you guys next time, whenever that'll be. Peace.